In this video, we're going to take a look at something called Dynamic Host Configuration Protocol, or as it's more commonly referred to, DHCP. You can see that I've logged back into my Synology router using my administrator's account. To access the router's DHCP settings, we first need to open the Network Center. From within Network Center, we need to select the option called Local Network. From within Local Network, under the General pane, you'll find the option Local IP. In this section, you can set the Internet Protocol or IP address for the router. Each device on your network will have a unique IP address. This address comes from a limited range of predefined numbers. These unique IP addresses are important as they ensure that the devices on your network are sending data to the correct places. As a home user, we can leave the IP address set to the default address of 192.168.1.1. You may have noticed that the IP address is the same as the one you type into your browser to access the settings on the router. So if I was to change the router's local IP address, the computer that I'm currently working from would no longer be able to access the SRM via 192.168.1.1. Subnet mask is a way of splitting a network into two or more networks. Again, a home user would leave this setting on the default of 255.255.255.0. The DHCP server section controls the automatic distribution of IP addresses to devices connected to your home network. If you were to disable DHCP server, you would have to manually visit each device on your network and assign them with a unique IP address. By enabling DHCP server, you let the router automatically assign IP addresses to any devices that are connected to your home network. The start IP address allows you to define a range of IP addresses that the router can automatically assign to devices. The first address is the preceding number after the IP address you assigned to the router in this case 192.168.1.2. The end IP address defines the end of the range of IP numbers that can be used by the router to assign to devices. You will notice that the IP address range is limited to 127 numbers. This is roughly the number of concurrent devices that a wireless router can handle. Address least time is how long an IP address is assigned to a device before the device has to request a renewal of that address. In this case, it's set to the default of 24 hours. In network terms, a gateway regulates network traffic between your home and the internet. As you can see, the gateway is 192.168.1.1, which is the IP address for this router. This means that we're instructing the router to act as the gateway between our home network and the internet. DNS, or Domain Name System, is the internet equivalent of the Yellow Pages. When you enter a domain name, i.e. www.mydoodads.com into your computer's web browser, DNS will provide your computer with the IP address for that server, which in turn allows the computer to connect to the website. As DHCP assigns both a DNS server address and an IP address to any devices connected to your network, you need to make sure this field contains a valid DNS server address. By using 192.168.1.1, we are saying that the router will provide DNS to all devices on the network. Secondary DNS is really used for redundancy. If the primary DNS server can't find an address, the router can query the secondary DNS server. I like to add a Google DNS server to this option. Domain name is only really needed if your home network is running a domain. Running a domain is mostly done by businesses and hardcore computer enthusiasts. As most home networks are not that sophisticated, we're going to ignore this option. Forward known DNS server is again an option related to running your own domain. As a home user, we can leave this option disabled. Enable Web Proxy Automatic Discovery is also an option that most home users can ignore. A proxy server is usually used by companies to improve internet performance and add security, but
but as we don't have a proxy server, we're going to leave this option disabled. As you can see, UPnP is enabled by default. UPnP or Universal Plugin and Play is a network protocol that allows devices on your network to connect to each other and share data. In a business environment, UPnP is usually disabled as it can adversely affect network performance. However, as a home user, UPnP removes a lot of the complexity associated with running your own network. For example, as a home user, you really don't want to have to set up the correct firewall rules or enable port forwarding just to play video games online. UPnP Client List displays a list of networked devices using UPnP to open ports to the internet. At the moment, I don't have any devices that need to communicate out to the internet, but if I was to connect a games console to this network, a list of network ports the console had opened would be displayed. Enable PPPoE Relay allows devices on the network to establish an individual PPPoE connection that can then pass through the router. As a home user, we would leave this option set to disabled. If you have enabled a guest wireless network, guest DHCP server allows you to define the range of IP addresses the guest wireless network will use. You can see that the range of IP addresses that the guest DHCP server will assign is slightly different from the IP addresses used by your wireless network. This helps to identify and isolate the two networks. We next come to the advanced options. IGMP snooping is a process that listens to internet group management protocol network traffic. This option is used to optimize wireless multicast traffic. Multicasting is used mostly when streaming media. It is when one device broadcasts to a select group of devices on a network. The advantage of multicasting is that the broadcasting device will only send a single copy of the data to all the devices in a group. If your network has a lot of multicasting traffic, your network speed will slow. Snooping allows the router to manage the multicast traffic, which then helps the overall network speed. As a home user, you would enable snooping if you did a lot of streaming or mirroring to, say, an Apple TV or a Chromecast. Personally, I have both an Apple TV and a Chromecast. And while I've not experienced any issues with streaming or mirroring on the Apple TV, I do have to enable IGMP snooping if I want to mirror on the Chromecast. It's worth noting that snooping is constantly monitoring for multicast transmissions, and that uses a lot of router processing power. As a Synology router can function as much more than just a router, I'm going to leave this option disabled to reserve processing cycles for other functions that I do use. IGMP Proxy is another setting that aims to improve network speeds when multicasting. It is a setting that allows your router to interact with other routers to exchange IGMP messages. As most home users don't have multiple routers, we can leave this option disabled. IGMP version will only become enabled if you have enabled IGMP snooping. NAT or Network Address Translation is an internet standard that enables a local area network to use one set of IP addresses for internal traffic and a second set of addresses for external traffic. As a home user, you would have NAT enabled. NAT also provides some basic firewall protection. So, now that we've run through the DHCP settings on a Synology router, let's take a look at something called DHCP reservation. First, let's see which devices connected to my router have been assigned an IP address by DHCP. If we select the DHCP Clients tab, we can see a list of all the devices that have been assigned IP addresses. At the moment, I have only one device, the computer I'm using to configure the router with. As most home users would want to share a single printer with all of the devices on their network, let's add a printer to this wireless network using DHCP. Ah, but have you noticed a problem with this scenario? As DHCP only leases an IP address to a device, potentially the IP address of the printer could change. For example, after a router reboot, the printer could be assigned a different IP address, so any devices looking to print will suddenly be sending print data to the wrong device and nothing will be printed out from the printer.
To get around this, we can use DHCP reservation. As the name suggests, we can reserve an IP address in the DHCP range for exclusive use by a device. At the moment, the computer I'm working from has a reserved IP address. I'm now going to add a HP 8600 printer to this wireless network. You can see the MAC address of the printer, the printer name, how long the IP address is going to be leased for, and the IP address itself. You can add the printer to the DHCP reservation list in one of two ways. If you select DHCP reservation, then click the add button, a new entry is added to the DHCP reservation list and you would add the MAC address and IP address of the printer into the fields provided. However, the easier way to add a device to the DHCP reservation list is to return to DHCP clients, locate and select the device that you want to reserve, then select add to address reservation. If we return to DHCP reservations, you can see that the printer has now been added to the list. The computer that I'm working from doesn't need to be in the reservations list. To remove the computer, I simply select it, click remove, and then save my changes. My printer is now the only device left in the reservation list. So to recap, we've taken a look at how you reserve an IP address for a network device like a printer. We've seen how you can review devices assigned IP addresses by DHCP, and we've looked at the DHCP settings on a Synology router.